Lewis Wicks Hine, a pioneer of social documentary photography, was born and raised in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. Hine first took up photography around 1903 as an extension of his work as a teacher at the Ethical Culture School in New York City. He soon came to embrace the camera as a tool of social uplift by taking pictures of the conditions that young children will work in. Not only did Hines document the horrors of work, he also depicted the dignity of labor. This is best seen in his photos of the construction of the Empire State Building. From 1930 to 1931, he took hundreds of pictures of the Empire State Building under construction. These photos, as well as photographs of factory workers and other laborers, were published in Men at Work. Hine was hired to photograph all aspects of the building's construction, but it's obvious from his photographs that he found his most searing subject in the structural iron workers. Burroughs stated that Hine's photographs explore the various aspects of working on a skyscraper, those of bricklayers, riveters, machinists, iron workers, welders, drillers, plumbers, steel workers, carpenters, and hoist engineers among them, many dangling, hanging, or balancing with 1,000 feet or more above Fifth Avenue. These men, sky boys as Hyam would call them, raised the building steel frame, balancing on airy perches to join columns and beams leading the way upward as the other trades followed from below. Hine understood that to photograph the men who raised steel, it would not do to stand on the pavement. He would have to enter their element, to climb out among them at a high altitude and take the chances they took. One of Hine's most more ingenious techniques was to have himself hoisted in an open steel box rigid to a derrick line so that he could dangle over the iron workers a quarter mile above the ground. Thus, he managed to capture, as no one had before, the dizzying and sometimes marvelous work of building skyscrapers. Through the photographs that Heinz took, portrayed the strength and pride of these iron workers, as well as portraying that men controlled the machine to create a better life for themselves. Lois Hines stated in the book, Men at Work, I will take you into the heart of modern industry where machines and skyscrapers are being made, where the character of men is being put into the motors, the airplanes, the dynamics upon which the life and happiness of millions of us depend. Alexander Gardner made his claim to fame through his work in collodion photography during the Civil War. Although he is considered an American artist, Gardner was actually born in Paisley, Scotland in 1821. He later moved to the U.S. permanently in 1856, settling in New York City. After practicing photography on his own, Gardner was able to find work with Matthew Brady. At the time, Matthew Brady was one of the top photographers in New York. However, Brady's eyesight began to deteriorate and he put Gardner in charge of his galleries and used his photographs along with the work of others to keep up his reputation. In 1861, according to the Civil War Trust Organization, Alexander Gardner's career in photography changed forever. This was due to the start of the American Civil War. During the war, portrait photos became very popular and Gardner quickly became one of the best portrait photographers throughout the Civil War. Unfortunately, it was not until later on that the world discovered the photos taken by Gardner were his own. When the war started, Matthew Brady used his popularity to grow his own name and business by hiring photographers, and he was given credit for most of their own work, Gardner being one of the photographers on this very long list. This did not prevent Gardner from working hard to get the best photos he could. Garner became one of the first photographers to ever portray the bodies of dead soldiers in his work. When put in the galleries, this act was received with great shock and, help, and helped show the harsh realities of the war. However, as stated earlier, Garner was a great photographer, but was an exceptional portrait photographer. 
This brings us to the photos that I believe to be some of the most interesting pieces of work in Garner's collection. It has been confirmed that Alexander Garner took the most portrait photos of America's 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. In fact, it has been said that he took twice as many as any other photographer. Another interesting fact noted by Mark Katz in his book, Witness to an Era, is that he is documented as being the last photographer to capture a portrait of President Lincoln only five days before his assassination. It is clear that Garner was intrigued by President Lincoln just by the sheer amount of portraits he took. Garner also managed to be the photographer that took portraits not only of the conspirators that planned Lincoln's assassination, but also their own execution. The photos taken during the Civil War, as well as many of the famous photos of Abraham Lincoln, help solidify Garner as one of the greats in American art history. Thanks for watching, everyone.